Over the past few months, I've been working on different spaces in my house and recently finished doing a makeover on my home office. Hello and welcome to the value space. In this video, I'll be taking you through my desk setup tour. This video is a part of an ongoing home office series and if you haven't watched the first video yet, I'll leave a link in the description box for you to check out. Make sure you stick around till the end to get a preview of what's coming up next and don't forget to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. Up until I fully delved into the creative world, my desk setups have always been minimal, simple and basic but nonetheless very productive, more so for studying. Over the past few years, my creative needs kept growing, hence the need to upgrade to cater for the changes and make my workflow more fluid. As a creative, design and tech enthusiast, I'll be progressively updating my setups based on my changing needs. Before I go on, I want to put a disclaimer that a lot of the items you see in here I've acquired over time and are things that I've wanted and not necessarily need, even though they play a part in my productivity. That said and done, if you're interested in any of the items, I'll leave links in the description box and as always, timestamps will also be there in case you want to jump around. Without further ado, buckle up, grab a drink, some popcorn and let's get straight into it. Kicking off with the design process. For starters, my previous desk setup had mainly neutral colors and very few desk accessories and peripherals. As is with all my setups, during the initial design process, I started off by gathering inspirations from various platforms like Instagram and Pinterest. I ended up settling for a dark themed setup with wooden accents along with a touch of greenery to bring it to life. Moving along, the first stop is the skeleton of the setup, which is my desk. At the heart of the setup is my dual seat stand desk from Desky. Constructed on a steel frame, it comes with four programmable settings. It's got a press interface that you can adjust by holding the up and down buttons or by adjusting your four programmable settings to get to the seating and standing heights. The motorized foundation lifts it quietly at the press of a button, which is great for when I decide to walk while standing or just to stretch my legs. To help with fatigue while working on its standing preset, I stand on an anti-fatigue standing desk mat from Temple and Webster. It's made of a thick and dense foam that is so soft to the touch which helps take away the pressure from the soles of my feet. Moving on to the desktop, I went for a walnut desktop since its warm and natural look matches the aesthetic and color scheme I was going for. For those wondering what this is, it's the famous 74x32 IKEA Calbi countertop found in most YouTube setups. I like the look of the entire desktop which is beautifully crafted and also the contrast it brings sitting right above the IKEA Alex drawers which I DIY'd by changing the color from white to black. Inside the drawers I have drawer organizers from IKEA that help in keeping the drawers neat and well organized. Moving along, my monitor of choice is the super ultra wide Samsung CJ89 coming in at an expansive 49 inches. Over the years I've had a few monitors and this behemoth is my absolute favorite so far and for few good reasons. First off, its color representation is decent for video production, coming in at a max brightness of 303 nits and a resolution of 3840 by 1080 which is like having two 27-inch monitors but without the bezel in the middle. This being a super ultra-wide, it delivers an amazing canvas especially for video creators since there's plenty of screen real estate thanks to its 32 by 9 aspect ratio. Next is, its sheer size eliminates the need for a dual monitor space, hence making it perfect for compact spaces like this one. By the way, for those who rock Apple computers with the M1 chip that only support one Thunderbolt display, this is a 144Hz curved display that when paired with my M1 Mac Mini makes mincemeat of everything I throw at it. All that delivering a phenomenal immersive experience. Its built-in KVM switch enables me to switch between different computers without needing to unplug my mouse, keyboard and speakers. And just a side note, after using this curved display, my productivity has gone through the roof, especially on the editing front. If you're thinking of getting an ultra-wide or super ultra-wide, I highly recommend. Moving on, to give the monitor a floating look and create more space on the desk, I mounted it on the HX Agatron monitor arm. It works perfectly well since it enables me to easily adjust the screen further back or closer to my face and as you can see it also helps with a bit of cable management which I'll be showing you in just a bit. 
Moving on to cable management. My previous setup had no form of cable management and was in complete chaos, thus the need to incorporate one when I did my home office makeover. I got a cable management tray that came with a sit stand desk and mounted it underneath the desktop. I also used cable clips and ties to help give it a clean look. At the moment, it still looks really clean since I don't have that many peripherals going into the computer and I plan to keep it that way even when I add more accessories to the setup. On to the driving force behind the display, my computer of choice is the M1 Mac Mini with 16GB of RAM and 512GB of storage. I must say the M1 chip in the Apple computers has revolutionized everything. These new Macs are exceptional and make light work of everything thrown at them, be it complex 4K edits, graphic intense projects or rendering massive projects. My secondary workstation was a 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2018 and recently upgraded to the 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro which I've done a review and if you haven't watched it, I'll leave a link of the video in the description box. The main reason for the upgrade being, the 14 inch MacBook Pro is way superior in terms of performance and I mostly use the 13 inch MacBook Pro for simple edits that are not graphic intense, many reels and photos for my socials. Speaking of which, you can also follow me on Instagram. Twitter and TikTok to get snippets of what I do. Moving on to sound and audio, I'm currently using the Kanto YU2 speakers in Walnut and I'd say this is the premium budget end of the market at around a thousand Australian dollars. Besides its main function of providing good quality sound, I like how it perfectly blends into the black and walnut theme. I use them for video editing a lot and the sound is super accurate for me to monitor my audio levels, the only caveat being they don't pack that much bass. I place them on these black speaker stands from Amazon which help elevate them to the perfect angle. Still on audio, when I'm not using the desktop speakers, I usually use my AirPod Max which I wear when doing my initial talking head video setup edits or when doing voiceovers. Despite carrying a considerable amount of weight, I find them the comfiest headphones for my big head. Even though I bought Apple's proprietary 3.5mm jack to lightning cable, I prefer using them in wireless mode with almost no lag. After use, I usually dock them on this beautiful headphone stand in black with a walnut accent. The only drawback in my opinion would be not being able to switch them off. To finish off the audio and sound setup, I chose to go with the Blue Yeti microphone which I mainly use for my voiceovers and talking head shots. In my opinion, one of the best USB microphones out there. It delivers good sound for the price and it's extremely easy to set up. I went with the black model to match the ongoing theme and I also like the fact that I can plug in the headphone jack to monitor my voice when recording. It also gives me a variety of techy audio patterns when it comes to audio recordings, however, carried mod is the best when it comes to what I do. I mounted it on a cheap boom amp, although I'm yet to put the shock mount which would help prevent any reverberations caused by shocks, vibrations or any ambient noise making it into my recordings. It's also got a pop filter which helps deal with the plosives when doing my voiceovers. Once I'm done using it, I simply swing the arm around and push it off to the side. As for peripherals and desk accessories, I got a ton of stuff from Grobman and a few things from Minimal Desk Setup and Delta Hub. Starting off with the monitor riser, the walnut top gives it a very natural and warm look and also elevates the overall aesthetic of the setup. This is the setup without the riser and this is the setup with the riser. Notice the big difference in aesthetics and visual interest. Let me know in the comment section what you think about it. As for function, it acts as an extra shelf and I also use it as a makeshift phone stand by leaning my phone on it. I can also slide my keyboard underneath and create space for doing other things. And to wrap it up, it also acts as a docking station for my M1 Mac Mini. To avoid scratching and leaving marks on my desktop while using, I added a wool felt desk pad and a few coasters from Minimal Desk. As you can see, it covers most of my working area and therefore useful to place additional stuff on it like my phone, the BenQ Lite controller and a notepad. It's convenient because of its structure and doesn't shift easily, thus ensuring everything stays together, keeping all the items in place. The wool material has a lot of texture to it, thus making it a good mousepad as well, although I don't use it for that function. Moving on, the next items are my keyboard, keyboard tray and wrist rest. 
these three items work in sync to ensure the ultimate user experience. Starting off with the Apple Magic Keyboard that has a pretty thin profile and works exceptionally well with my M1 Mac Mini. Its thin profile enables it to fit like a glove in the keyboard tray by Gourmet. Made from solid American hardwood, it complements the walnut theme in my space. The natural cock lining the base prevents the tray from scratching the desk pad and also enables it to move smoothly. Each tray is hand sanded and oiled for a rich, lustrous finish. Below the keyboard is a wrist rest also from Grovemed. It features a panel of supple vegetable tan leather seated on a bed of hand sanded hardwood. The wrist rest elevates and provides cushioning as you type and as is with all high quality leather items, it develops a rich patina over time. Next up is the mouse, mousepad and wrist rest. Adjacent to the keyboard are the next set of peripherals and accessories. Starting off with my mouse of choice, the Logitech MX Master 3. In my opinion, this is the most ergonomic mouse and the best in terms of productivity. Having used an Apple Magic mouse before, this has been a complete game changer. Its scroll wheel comes in handy when scrolling through the timeline, adjusting tools in Premiere Pro and for my overall computer experience. I enjoy its 4000 dpi sensor and the ability to customize the inputs on the Logitech option software. As much as I could use it on the wool felt desk mat, I don't prefer using it that way. I mean, don't get me wrong, it feels super nice and I love how it protects the desk surface but I prefer using my leather mouse pad from Grovebed. Not only because it provides a better sliding surface for the Logitech MX Master 3 but also because it has a pen tray. Contrary to popular belief, going digital is the way. I like writing my scripts and camera shots on my little notebooks so having a pen close to my peripherals comes in handy. Which brings me to the next saying, nothing beats good old pen and paper. As you've seen through my entire setup, ergonomics is super important to me, hence the reason why I got the Capio 2.0 wrist rest from Delta Hub. I know a lot of you are asking, what on earth is that? To put it simply, it's a compact wrist rest for your mouse that helps prevent wrist fatigue from prolonged use. It's actually unnatural for your hand to be in this kind of position for a prolonged period of time and it can lead to some serious health effects down the line like Caputano syndrome, hence the name Capio. Right across the mouse I have my MagSafe stand from Gromed and an Apple MagSafe charger mounted on it. The stand is purpose built to capitalize on the speed and convenience of the MagSafe charging while also being a delight to use. Its solid steel base securely anchors my devices and the hand sanded hardwood and vegetable tan leather create a unique modern look. As for the Apple MagSafe charger, it's fast and snappy. Its perfectly aligned magnets attached to my iPhone and provide faster wireless charging of up to 15 watts. One of the main reasons I got it apart from its charging component, when working, I usually have my phone on silent with very limited notifications but every notification that comes through, I either pick it up and have a look or kind of lean over the phone to see what the message was. Whereas, now I can just glance towards it and my phone unlocks with Face ID, allowing me to preview the messages. As a content creator, I sometimes sit for hours on end, therefore ergonomics is important to keep me healthy. Having a chair that takes care of that was one of the driving factors when settling for one and something that would match my setup aesthetically. I'm currently using the Imps replica office chair and boy isn't this a beauty, I bet you guys would agree with that. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section. I like how it's premium leather and smooth finish scream class and most important of all it's super comfy. With all the beautiful and amazing pieces on my setup, lighting is important not only for its sole purpose of giving dimension and depth to everything that meets the eye, but also to create different moods especially in the evenings. For starters, the big window on the left of the desk leaks enough natural light to get me through the day. Once it starts to get dark in the evenings, the different types of lights come to life, starting off with the task lights. To the right, I have my curved floor lamp that gives a bit of a dramatic look as you come into the room. It's got a mirror smart bulb and other than adding visual interest to the space, I use it to light up the right side of the desk. The next task light is my BenQ screen by Halo, which I use to light up the cockpit of the setup. It's got an asymmetric light pattern that minimizes glare on the screen and the coolest thing about it, it's got a wireless controller. I love how I can place it anywhere on the desk and it looks awesome and clean without a cable attached to it. 
You can turn it on by hovering over the sensor and from there you can adjust the brightness, temperature or just set it to auto and it will adjust the best settings for you. It fits on most monitors but it's also got a special adapter for a curved monitor. Another unique feature is that it's got a light on the counterweight to light up the wall to further reduce eye strain. For accent lighting, I got an IKEA desk lamp on the left side of the desk, which you can adjust to different color temperatures and brightness using the little knob. Its main purpose is to accentuate the items on the left side of the desk and the office. Finishing off with ambient lighting, I got Merose LED light strips behind the desk that I controlled using the Merose app on my phone. Moving on to the softer side of things, amidst all the grandeur and boldness of the tech, trickles in the subtlety and softness that is my little plant collection. The most jaw-dropping being this levitating plant that not only embodies the woody theme of the space but is also the perfect conversation starter. Its gentle infinite rotations evoke a very ethereal cam to the space while working and also inspire Edison-like creativity throughout the day. Next up is the famous IKEA plant that almost all YouTubers have on their desks and in my reckoning, no desk setup is complete without at least one IKEA plant. For that reason, I got two on either side of the monitor riser. Moving on to decor, the only decorative piece is this vintage telephone and boy, what drama and character does this bring to the setup. It's bronze and black undertones perfectly tying in with the color scheme of the space. I think this is the statement piece of the setup. Let me know what's your favorite item in the comment section. With that, I wrap up my desk setup tour. People of the internet, I hope you've enjoyed this first adoration of my desk setup tour and as it goes without saying, I'll be making changes to it as time goes. So be on the lookout for the next setup video. That's it and done. See you on the next one.